Hi, this is Trisha from Lemon Paper Lab. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create this fun overlapping circle effect in Photoshop. If you would like the design files for this tutorial, uh, be sure to uh, check out my Patreon page where I upload all of the uh, design files for um, all of my tutorials here on YouTube. If you'd like to uh, support this channel, go ahead and check that out and I will leave a link to uh, my Patreon page in the description below. To start off with, we're going to go ahead and create a new file. I'm going to use the dimensions of 1200 pixels by 1200 pixels, resolution set to 300 pixels per inch, color mode is RGB color, and then background content set to transparent, and then we'll go ahead and click on create. From here, we are going to use the shape tool to create a circle. The keyboard shortcut for the shape tool is U and then you're going to use shift U to toggle between them. So here I'm currently have the triangle shape tool selected. So I'm going to go shift U until I get to my circle. You can also right click here to uh, select the tool that you want. Clicking on my canvas here, I'm going to create a circle that is the size of my canvas. So we're going to go 1200 pixels by 1200 pixels and then just clicking on OK. Accessing the move tool here V on the keyboard, I'm just going to align it to the center with the help of the guides. Uh, with this circle, I'm going to change its color to white to start off with. And then I'm just going to put this at 100% just so I can keep track of my layers here. And then I'm going to duplicate this layer, Command or Control J. I'm going to make this one black and then I'm going to put this at 90% and then we are going to change the scale command or control T and then up here you're going to make sure this icon is clicked so it will scale evenly together and then we are going to change this to 90% clicking on OK. I'm going to select my original layer here again and then I'm going to duplicate this one as well command or control J. I'm going to bring this to the top and then we are going to change this to 80% and then I'm going to uh, transform it so command or control T and then this time we are going to go 80% here and then selecting OK. We're going to do that again for our original layer command or control J. I'm going to move it to the top. I'm going to mark 70% here. I'm going to change it to black. And then let's go ahead and transform that command or control T. We're going to go 70% here, clicking on OK. And then I'm going to continue to do that throughout. So we'll duplicate this one, command or control J, moving it to the top. We're going to make this one 60%. And then command or control T to actually scale it. And then we have our 60% here. And we'll continue. So we're going to duplicate this one, Command or Control J. I'm going to drag it to the top here. We're going to make it 50%, changing its color to black. Command or Control T. We're going to go 50% here, selecting OK. And then we'll grab our original Command or Control J, bringing it to the top. We're going to go 40%. And then we'll scale it, Command or Control T, bringing it to 40% here, clicking on OK. And then we'll continue to do that, Command or Control J, bringing it to the top. We'll go 30%, making it black, Command or Control T to transform it. We'll go 30% here and then we are getting close to the finish line. So we'll select our original command or control J, bringing it to the top. Go 20% here, command or control T to transform. 20% and we have one more layer to do. So we'll duplicate our original command or control J, bringing it to the top here. We'll 10% Command or Control T, put it at 10% here, and then we just have to change our color to black, and we have our shape. Now that we have all our layers, I'm going to go ahead and go Shift Click to select them all. I'm going to right click and convert to Smart Object. And then uh, from here, we are going to duplicate it into the four corners. So I'm just going to go ahead and duplicate this layer, Command or Control J. 
using the move tool V on the keyboard. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom out command or control with the minus key so we can see it a little better. We have our copy here and we are just going to drag it to the corner here. Let's go ahead and duplicate that layer, command or control J. And then we are going to drag it to the bottom here, waiting for those guidelines to help us. And so uh, the two opposite corners are going to be on top of our original circle. And then let's go ahead and duplicate this layer, command or control J. We're gonna drag it to uh, this next corner. For this one, we want it to be below our original, so I'm going to drag it below the original there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this layer, command or control J. And then we are going to bring it up to this corner here using the guides to help us align it. And we have that one underneath our original layer too. So now that we have our pattern here, I'm gonna go ahead and define it. So I'm gonna go edit, define pattern. You can give your pattern a name and then just go ahead and click on OK. Let's go ahead and test this pattern. So I'm gonna open up a new window. So I'm gonna go File, New. This time I'm gonna use the dimensions of digital scrap of paper, which is 3,600 pixels by 3,600 pixels. Resolution set to 300 pixels per inch. And then we'll just leave our color mode as RGB color. And then just go ahead and click on Create. Let's go ahead and create a pattern fill adjustment layer. So I'm going to select on pattern here. Uh, you can use the drop down and select a pattern here, but I'm just going to go ahead and click on OK and bring up my patterns panel. Selecting my patterns panel here, highlighted in blue, I can see my most recent pattern. If you do not see your patterns window, you're going to go to window and select patterns. With my pattern fill layer selected, I'm gonna go ahead and select that layer and we see our fun uh, overlapping circle pattern here. In this case, we cannot change uh, the colors here. So let's jump back into the original. I wanna create it to where I can actually uh, change the colors. So since these are smart objects, they will all adjust the same. So we can go ahead and click on our smart object from here, I'm going to uh, start combining some of these shapes. So on the bottom two layers, I'm gonna go ahead and command click to select both of them here. I'm gonna go to layer, combine shapes, and then I'm going to use the subtract front shape. And then as we can see, it combined those and now we have some transparent pixels here. I'm gonna do that for the same for our 70% and 80% layers here. I'm gonna go to layer, Combine shapes, subtract front shape, and we have it combined there. And then let's continue to do that with our 50 and 60% here. Layer, combine shapes, subtract front shape. And then we'll do that for our 30 and 40% layers. Layer, combine shape, subtract front shape. And then one more time here, layer, combine shapes, subtract front shape. And we have created the transparent pixels in between the layers. So let's go ahead and save this smart object, Command or Control S. And then we'll close this out, Command or Control W. And now uh, we have this pattern here. But we want to get it like our original, so we're going to need to use some layer mass. So looking at our layers panel here, the corner, the upper right corner here and the bottom right corner here should be on top. So in this case, we need to create a layer mask for our center object. So we have our center objects selected here. I'm gonna click the add layer mask button here. And then I'm going to get my brush tool, making sure my foreground color is black here. Looking at this top circle here, we have our middle circle selected. I'm going to start getting rid of the middle circle here, hiding it from view so we have the right overlapping effect of our objects. So we'll go ahead and just use the brush here to get rid of that there. Clean up a little bit more there. Okay, so we ha have removed it from here and now we need to do the same thing down here get rid of those uh, middle circle visibility here. Cleaning it up with our layer mask. 
continue to do that until we get all of it. Okay, I don't see any pieces. And now we need to do the same thing for each of these circles here. Uh, but in this case, we want the middle circle to be visible. So I'm going to scroll down in my layers panel. Let's start with this top left corner here. I'm going to add a layer mask. And then we are going to get rid of that circle so we can see our original center circle here. Cleaning it up here. Hiding those pixels with our layer mask. Okay, and then we are going to select our bottom right corner. We're going to add a layer mask here, and then we are going to do the same thing here. Cleaning up this circle. Okay, I think we got all the pixels there. And so now we have created that overlapping shape effect, um, but we also have our transparent pixels, so we'll be able to change the colors of our pattern. So we'll access our move tool here and just click off our canvas, and then let's go ahead and define this as a pattern. So let's go to edit, define pattern. Again, you can give it a name and then just clicking on okay. We'll jump back over into our other document here, and then I'm going to select the newly created pattern right here. And then let's go ahead and add some color fill layers. So I'm going to select the adjustment layer here and add a solid color. We'll just start with black for the moment and then just clicking on OK. And then I'm going to create a clipping mask. So to do that, you can go right click, create clipping mask, or you can hover between the layers and you can go option click for Mac users, alt click for PC to create that clipping mask. And then we are going to add another color fill layer. This time, let's just make it white for the moment. So I'm going to just hit FFF clicking on OK, and then we'll just drag this below our pattern fill layer, and we have our pattern here again. Let's go ahead and try a new color. Maybe we try a blue. See how pink looks. Okay, and then with this pattern fill layer, you can double click here, and then you have the option to scale your pattern. So let's see what it looks like at 50%. Um, maybe a little bit bigger. Let's go 75% here. And then when this dialog box is open, you could always rearrange how you want it to lay on your canvas. If you want to get back to the original, just click on Snap to Origin. And then we'll go ahead and click on OK. Since I scaled my pattern down, I'm going to go ahead and turn off this color fill layer. And so we see our transparent pixels here again. And then I'm going to define this pattern at this scale. So let's go edit, define pattern, clicking on OK. We see the newly created pattern here. If we click on that one, we'll see it at the 75% scale. So clicking back in here, I can just bring this back to 100% and this will be um, the scale that we want. You could always jump back into your original. We saw the full scale here, but we decided to bring it smaller. And now we have a pattern swatch at the scale that we like. So we can turn this color fill layer on again and then let's go ahead and export this as digital scrapbook paper. So I'm going to go to File, Export, Export As. Here we see a preview of our digital paper. And then here under File Settings, you can change the format. In this case, we do want it to be JPEG, so we're going to leave it at that setting. Here under Quality, you can bring up the quality. Uh, typically for digital scrapbook paper, you want to save it as, as a high quality, so you can bring up the quality here. I just note the higher the quality, the larger the file size here. Scrolling down under Color Space, I like to make sure Embed Color Profile is selected, and then you can just click to export your digital paper. Thank you for watching this video on how to create this fun overlapping circle effect in Photoshop. 
with the help of layer mass. Again, if you want access to all the design files from my tutorials, then you can join me over on Patreon. I will leave a link to it in the description below. Thank you for the support. It helps me to keep making these tutorials. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment below. Be sure to check out my other tutorials on how to create patterns in Photoshop. This is Trisha from Lemon Paper Lab. See you next time.